Happy Sunday, everybody. I hope that you are having a great day. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Judy. Okay, I guess it's a little bit too white here. I told you, no matter how well I fix the camera settings until I actually go live, it's not going to do anything. Hi, Lori. Now, let me tell you what happened because I'm in the process of kind of like deep cleaning my house. And when I was putting stuff out of the oven, I dropped, I drop a lot of stuff because of my hands. I dropped this and it hit a chair. So, and it got a crack and I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Am I going to remake it? And then I thought, no, you know what? It's a good thing in a way because I can show people what they can do if something like this happens. So they wouldn't all panic and think that, oh my God, I have to remake this whole thing because this can be very easily fixed. Okay, let me say hello. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Zenta. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Beth. Hi, Gail. Hi, Christy. Hi, Francis and Fran. And yes, I have to show a friend who is also has also a YouTube. And I noticed when I had yesterday my la sponsors only live that the now YouTube does a, uh, an instant uh, closed captioning. So I told him I was going to tell to let him know. So let me send him the the link so he can see for himself. All right, now we can get back to business. So, hi, Susan, Chris, Janice, Mary, Toots. Oh my God, you guys in New York must have some really bad snow. I know that it's been, um, we had some stuff here, but fortunately we were supposed to get some uh, freezing rain but we just had rain so we might get something this coming week but i don't know hi dana i'm glad that you finally did it hi Mihaela. so let's see what can we do here because you see i got this got messed up here too because when it fell it kind of hit the edge and it cracked the the clay on top so what can we do to fix this number one right here see because i don't want to lose this little piece for now what i'm going to do let me find my eyeglasses where's my eyeglasses there they are i'm going through these dollar tree eyeglasses like three a, <laughs> a month Oh my goodness, Zenta, that doesn't sound nice. So I'm going to put a little bit of bacon bond and kind of try to shove it underneath. Because remember, whenever I uh, show you how to stick stuff with a uh, bacon bond, I always tell you uh, place the bacon bond and then let it sit for a little bit because it thickens out and then whenever you put something on top of it it will not start sliding around so see I'm using a toothpick to push the bacon bond under this little crack and then I'm going to simply press on it and then get a little bit of paper towel and also, please excuse me today. I've been working so hard around, around the house and I've been 
lifting stuff and moving stuff and my back is just killing me and if somebody can please pay attention if I get lost in my work as usual and you see it's half an hour from now I need to take my pill otherwise if the pain starts I'm going to be in deep distress and I want to be able to do some now at the end of this I'm going to announce the 15,000 subscribers giveaway as usual we are I'm going to ask a question and I'm going to uh, make a pinned post and then I thought well 24 hours is not enough I'm going to allow 48 hours for the responses and you know because of the fact that it's going to involve my videos again past videos and because of the fact that i am um, uh, numbering my videos it would be easy for you to just put the number of the video there so and the price will be a 50 dollars amazon card and once again let me thank all of you who even if you don't have um, you cannot afford to sponsor me or donate to me you still use my affiliate links because that really really helps with me buying my um, materials not having to go out of pocket okay yeah and I, I saw that it was there's been for several days now uh, extreme cold but mostly towards Canada and some areas even down to minus 50 thank you Elaine thank you so much now what can we do for this uh, first of all the way that I saw this happening was all this area kind of like this to go with forests so hi Mary hi Kathy hi Isabel so we are going to go with forest but then when coming here I'm going to come a little bit down just to to give it more uh, depth perception more a 3d thing and then I'll figure out I'll have to figure out how to fix this because this we need to fix somehow so we'll have to see how we can fix this and to be very honest now with this thing here the way that I see it the best would be to put some cliffs here going into the water more close up than the mountain with the castle I think it would be much better so first of all let's go ahead and do some forests here so that this area with the little break can be obviously fixed so in order to do that it's going to be the same principle as I used here everything that is farther away will be less defined as color goes so um, it's going to be a little bit grayish so I have the uh, jungle green everything here is primo I have the jungle green and because of the fact that jungle green actually does have gray in it because it does have white and does have black and together they make a gray and I forgot to get me some white too and by the way I fixed the problem with the camera going towards the um, pasta machine it wasn't the camera it was the extension USB extension I was using and also my makings machine motor burned up so I'm going to have to order another one good thing that I have the Atlas so if anything happens so I'm going to just prepare myself going to get a little bit of green jungle green and then I'll get some white and 
I'll get some black. Black, you only need a smidgen. You don't need a lot because you don't want it to be dark gray. It has to be fairly light gray. So, let me mix this a little bit. And then I'll show you, you make actually two different mixes. it go faster so remember whenever you want to do something faster all you have to do is to roll because it's going to be more than one fold at a time or you can do a string like thingy and then simply twist it And it's going to make the mixing of two colors faster. there black and white uh, take a little bit longer than other colors to mix just because they are so far apart remember the more two colors are far apart the longer it takes to mix them or to do a skinner blend with them so again let's twist 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 and twist some more <laughs> nice that you got yourself neighbors and I bet everybody pretty much all states have a polymer clay guild who knows maybe you've met each other before okay now what I'm going to do is to get this thing in a bead Hi, Sharon. Okay, and I got the bead and I'm going to roll it a little bit just to make it easier to cut. And I'm going to pretty much cut it into one third and two thirds. And this I'm going to cut in half. Because, as I said, I want to do two mixes. One that's going to be more grayish. Yeah, absolutely you can put a decorative something. But in this specific example, it's kind of hard to put anything decorative if you want to do a um, landscape. You know, so you kind of need to fix it on the spot. And I know you're going to ask me, what do we do about the... Uh, how do you call this? Not the back. The spine of the book. Um, your best bet, honestly, with anything like this, is to use fabric. Or if you find some uh, pleather is also a good thing. But I personally prefer fabric. Uh, you can use female leather, of course. Um but your best bet the one that will not mess up at all is a fabric um you can make it look really really nice and i'm going to show you on this specific uh journal how to make a beautiful antique looking spine using burlap fabric that you can find pretty much at any fabric store and um, liquid clay and it will be something that does not break 
does not crack and will be quite um, resilient and hardy. It will resist you opening because see that's why I stopped here. I didn't stop lower back because if you keep opening the journal here you cannot bring the clay all the way to here because it's going to crack after a few openings and closes maybe even after the first one okay so we have the first greenish gray and the second one is going to be even lighter again let me make a string as I said, this is the fastest way to mix something by rolling and twisting because that's how you get the most mixes. Yeah, here it's not chilly. I think it's like 40 degrees. Let me check. Oh. 46 so it's not bad at all <laughs> you think so I don't know I still as I said I still have the atlas normally I told you I only use the atlas for uh, whites and translucents and white pearl and the makings is the workhorse pretty much but uh, I just waited to do my order to polyclay play because I always try to do a $100 order so I don't have to because whatever you buy over 100 you don't pay regular you get free shipping regular shipping okay so now I got the darker I don't know if you can see it on camera that this one is a little bit more greenish than this one so next step let's put a little bit of um, forest here and I'm going to bring it down a bit And I'm going to bring it a little bit in front of the mountain as well. So I placed it like this. Like this. The bacon bond. To give it a little bit of depth. Now, let me get a pinch of the lighter gray. it over here I only need it for the top not for the bottom so no need to go towards the top because the bottom is closer so it will not have any kind of grayish hues so I'm placing this here like this and of course cut it here little twist there then for the next one I don't have to place bacon bond because it's going to be on top of already raw clay thank you CC And again, let's get our, ourselves a straight line. And if I get here, I'm going to have to go a little bit lower. So I'm going to take myself, this will be my reference point. So I'm going to go like this for that one. 
but pretty much before putting that one in what I'm going to do I'm going to grab one of my and you can do this with the uh, bowl stylus but remember I always prefer this this is from a set of uh, wax carvers and you can find them you get like 12 or a little bit under ten dollars if you go in the uh, sculpting tools in my Amazon influencer store they are pretty much all the way to the bottom and this is my most favorite out of all of them uh, it's got kind of goes one is like this and one is like this and it's got this on one end and this on the other end and I did sharpen this using a sharpening stone I did sharpen this a little bit and it's very very thin at the top this is what I used to use the most when I was uh, sculpting um, art dolls one of a kind art dolls so what you want to make here is a little bit of a ragged ragged the end here because these are supposed to be trees right so we want to give it a little bit of raggedness and some dimension as well and there would be some trees that might be a little bit taller and we can just play a little bit with the clay here just make sure that you give it enough raggedness so it would look like trees in the distance and then we can come and first put a little bit of raggedness on the next one just a little bit and then gently lift it and place it on top of the other one then we can start playing with the pure jungle green and I'm going to work on this side too with that more grayish jungle green and I need my jungle green to be a little bit uh, conditioned yes as Elaine said Mary the paper doesn't ignite until you reach I think it's actually like 400 and uh, what's the name of the book is it 451 Fahrenheit no I thought it was different I have a brain brain fart so I'm going to do the same twisting thing to get my clay very fast condition this method is very good whenever you have to deal with very small amounts of clay there we go so I just want to make my play very soft but yeah that's how you remember hi Gaylene that's how you remember what's the ignition when you don't have brain parts like me you think of the book because that's the significance of the title of the book because they were burning books and it's the ignition temperature of paper yeah okay so it's 451 I wasn't sure if I remember if that was the correct thank you Elaine thank you so much okay now we are going to place a very very thin one this time because I don't want to bring this too much to make this uh, elements too far out so I'm going to change it to a very thin 
sheet. This is a seven on the atlas. And like I did before, first I need Actually, you know what? We are far enough that I don't really need the sheet. I do. Let's put the sheet on the bottom. Because we are going to come in a little bit. And then I'm going to place just a pinch right here. It helps when you remove the lid. Mm, what I do, Mary, these ones. I told you Zenta, that's a, an idea, but it usually kind of breaks apart. Um, go to Family Dollar. These ones, I think they were like $2 or $3. Actually have two sizes that I've been buying. It's in the school supplies. Uh, you cannot find anything good at uh, the Dollar Tree because they don't have hard covers but you pretty much need hard cover a good idea if you really want to do one that looks really really good um, like an antique one one way of making them is to actually buy because there are people who make handmade handmade books and they do the covers with leather or with metal or with all kinds of stuff and you can actually buy paper stacks of paper and you can order them even yellowish that they would look uh, antique and then what you do you have and you can order your paper already cut to a certain dimension you use a, um, a hole puncher and then you make your uh, covers just flat sheets of paper of uh, clay with all the decoration that you want but make sure that you do you punch uh, the holes and you punch the holes not on the top only on the bottom cover and then what you do after everything is done you pretty much uh, put a string you can use um, yarn you can use twine you can use whatever and you put the string going like this through the bottom cover and then you string the the string through the paper and then you do the fabric for the covers and then you make a metallic magnetic clasp to make look the book the book look almost like a chest maybe one of these days will do that but i'm not going to go ahead of myself because you know how i'm still trying to catch up on all the stuff okay let me go just a second let me go get my pill okay so um usually you can find if you go the best fabric to use for this kind of stuff if you have a fabric store around and yes i did books like that before uh if you have a fabric store around look for there's a very a stiff fabric 
Hi, Mike. Hello. There's a very stiff fabric that's a little bit uh, less thread count. Not as much as a cheesecloth. It's a little bit more thread count than a cheesecloth, but it's the type of fabric that they use in the front of men's jackets to keep the front of the of the coat, you know, like in two piece suits for men high quality to keep the front of the jacket of the coat of the suit nice and flat. That is one of the best. Uh, not, that's how it's called. I had no idea how it's called. Another thing that you can buy, there are some very thick, uh, and that is only if you find it wide enough, depends on how thick your book is. Uh, they are very, very thick and very, very sturdy ribbons that normally in uh, upholstery, they get put, placed between the upholstery fabric and the wood itself to make stuff uh, look nice on furniture. That's another very nice and very pretty and very stir uh, sturdy uh, thing that you can use for the spine of a book that you make from scratch. Um, and honestly, well, the books that I made, I didn't, I'm going to be very honest, I didn't make any it would be a first for me to do it out of clay the the way that i did them i they did have some polymer clay decorations you know like the and the corners and all that but i made them with uh, wood covers either with wood burning or with wood sculpting and then i also made with leather over wood and the leather being all stamped and all kinds of stuff so but if i manage to catch up on everything remember that now i have i'm gonna have to get into the valentine stuff uh then hopefully in a couple months we'll do a, a book from scratch and i think it would be a good thing to do a mini series on the live just because uh, usually you kind of have to let stuff rest between the steps until you do everything now let's go ahead and do our forest here i have a you see i'm using my fingers and i have a little not a little i have a piece of uh, paper towel here that i always wipe my fingers on so let's place a piece of very thin uh, jungle green here and make some trees here as well and somebody sent me a message asking uh, that i didn't do any kind of paint or chalk pastel over the stuff and if i'm going to yes i'm going to but uh, i thought that in the very beginning it would be nicer to just show you how you can do all the colors and all the effects just with uh, polymer clay without using anything else except polymer clay all right now my for my next thing actually i am going to use i'm going to get a little bit of jungle green because i need only remember i'm making very small quantities because you only need small quantities yeah, I never thought of that, Zenta. That's a really nice idea. So I got a pinch of a grain of black that I'm mixing in the jungle green so that I obtain a darker jungle green. Oops. And we'll do the water reflections with color because it's much easier to do it with color you can do it with polymer clay but why work for an hour when you can do that in five minutes 
That would be great, Mary. That's a great idea for your friend. Okay, now I'm gonna grab a, an etch and a pearl, etch and pearl thing, maybe the smaller one. And all of these, you can use all kinds of things. I mean, you can even use, let me not use stuff, let me use simple things. Because I always try the, the lives to make them very budget friendly and very uh, beginner friendly. So if you're a beginner and you don't understand something, don't forget ask. Because the two ladies who are so kind to be my moderators, they watch the chat and if I miss something because I'm focused on what I'm doing here, they will repeat your question. Okay, so I'm going to grab small pieces and kind of get them a little flattened and I'm going to place little trees here that will be slightly maybe I should go in a zoom here give me just a second let me zoom in see better what I'm doing here because it's a uh, kind of tiny so I'm getting these see this is the size that I'm getting I'm putting it here and then I go in with the toothpick and I kind of make it look all uh, like and stuff and then to give it even more color I'm going to grab and you can just make mixes you can just put if you don't have this is the olive this is the Spanish olive the new color in uh, in Primo and you can grab a little bit of this and more towards the this line and put a few dots okay stay there but that what would be and then extend them the way that would be a, a tree of a different color from farther away let's see I'm putting just little dots not more you don't want to go overboard with this and now we have pretty much a full and you can actually put just tiny tiny dots even more back more in the back like if there was only the tip of a tree showing but again kind of mix it in and now I'm going to place First, some of the darker ones. Let's make some trees standing out here. So watch this. I'm going to bring one down. You saw that it was a little bit longish. Right? Kind of like this. And now, get back on it. And give it some branches. just pull on the clay to give it some branches it's going to just show once you place the other ones 
so you can make it even thinner than that you can place one here and then let's give it branches from the end as I said you don't really need all kinds of tools and utensils I keep saying whenever I did the uh, because I I did a quite a bit of a break in polymer clay and art for quite a while because it was just myself and I had to make money to live right and um, when I started working again with polymer clay was when I was going through chemo and that that and computer games kind of kept me sane but when I started working again because I was in sick leave and all that I didn't have a lot of money didn't really have a good budget so I started with got the one jungle gray one flesh color and there was one more color I forgot what color it was and one uh, green perlex mica powder and then I had a needle a toothpick and my cuticle cutter and I did the um, mermaid and I sold it and the, the money I reinvested them uh, the best way to obtain a uh, antique look is not coffee, is black tea. And you can do the dipping, but you can also do the spraying. Hi, Robbie. So let's try and hurry up this whole thing. And you can go, let's go, just with the piece, because it's going to be easier to... So again, I got a small piece, and I'm going to rag, rag it up. lift it, place it here and now that I have it here I can actually go in with my toothpick let's get my toothpick and I can give it some texture to make it look like there's something here and then let's place some lighter Remember, it's still that Spanish olive. Now, Over here, it's not enough. No, this is obviously the waterline right and this would be a reflection now how do we do the reflection to make it look even better first of all we actually do need to do a waterline here and uh, your best bet would be with a slightly lighter color if you want to use the polymer tape So 
I'm going to make a super 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 thin strip here and place it right here this would be for this part of the forest and see how it already gives it dim dimension just by placing this tiny strip of lighter green of that olive green and now what you want to do is to actually start doing this a little bit too far down this would be the water reflection done with polymer clay and then there's one more thing that you need to do here and here you have to be if you want to do it with polymer clay you have to be very very careful where's my wife there's my wife you need to do some super 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 thin white strings but as I said, they have to be super, super, super thin. So, thin, 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 as thin. Even if they break, it's fine if they break. Just try to go as thin as you can. to be as I said they have to be super thin because you're supposed to be able to kind of lose them in here but you, they always have to be in horizontal lines and there we go now we got the whole reflection I'm going to do the reflection on this with the uh, paint and I'll show you a few other tricks hi Sonia thank you Zenta okay let's work a little bit on a cliff here so we can cover this part so I think I have gray hold on there's a primo gray I think I should have some so I don't have to mix stuff this is graphite. This is gray. Yeah, this is gray. So let's make some. Okay, I dropped something. I hit something. I don't know what I hit and it fell. I have no idea. Oh, yeah the journal the other journal okay so first i'm going to place bacon bond here and i'm going to kind of go like this Thank you, Isa. Okay, now remember, far away, lighter gray. So I think we can safely use this. Even if it's got just a touch of green in it, it's fine. It's not that big of a touch of green. So 
so I got it on a thin setting and I want it about this long oops sorry This goes here and I'm going to sculpt it a little bit because it cannot be this just like that it doesn't look good so let's give it a little bit of more depth it's not going to go all the way going to go like this I'm just trying to save time on uh, mixing stuff and then let's give it a little bit of dimension here oh come on get out of here there we go and on this one I'm going to actually use um, powder pigments powdered pigments okay now let's get a little bit of regular gray You know what before doing anything else let's put some some forest here because we forgot to put the forest here This forest is a little bit closer, so just adding some trees. And do I'm pulling a Bob Ross now, right? As I said, I'm going to do the. No, I said I'm going to do this in uh, acrylic. So, just want to show you all the different variants that you can use to do this. I should start doing like Emeril. Bam! And just give it a little bit of dimension to all these trees. Because remember, it's going to be both the color and the texture that you add here it's like a little 
bush more like a bush like trees These ones here don't look very good, so let's work them up a little bit. And there we go, much better. Okay, now, as I said, the gray. Baba <laughs> Irma, you crack me up. I'm very gently shaping this cliff a little bit. And preparing the room for the next layer of cliff now for the next layer of cliff I'm going to actually I have to mix a little bit of gray with the touch of black just a touch I don't want it much darker Well, I thought that because of that uh, crack being like that, the best thing would be to have it with something that would fully cover the crack and wasn't really possible to put anything closer and it had to go fairly high, so kind of had to be that way. I am mixing, doing that twirly thing. Oh, thank you. And by the way, for the ones of you who are members of my Facebook group, Nobody reminded me at the beginning of the month. Hello, you said you are going to give us the bonus and you didn't post any bonus video. So I did post the link to the bonus video and it will be on unlisted. So if you have the link, you can watch it until the end of the month. And the next month is going to be the following. Yeah, I thought above a sailboat. That's what I was going to, to do a, a boat of some kind just to give it more depth alrighty so I think that I'm pretty good in the mixing of this and even if I have a, a few streaks that's fine for the cliff so let's get this through the machine
I'm very gently cutting so I wouldn't cut the one underneath. I'm just cutting the top layer of the clay. all here and here I need to make it a little more and make sure that it's nice and stay there so yeah before you do this it's advisable that you wait for that bacon bun to thicken some Okay, now for the next trick, I'm gonna grab again, a, I don't know what I did with the other one, I'm gonna grab again the toothpick, but this time, and you can also use a, if you want, you can use a, a the handle of a paintbrush, or whatever calls to you, and I'm going to just make some know so they would kind of look like a because I'm going to come on top of this and I'm going to use powdered pigment or acrylic let's just go with acrylic because it it takes a little bit too much uh, advanced stuff to do the powdered pigment it's easier to do with acrylic let me just grab some gray and whitish and black give me just a second bye Irma hi Cindy hi Colleen I'll be right back Sorry, I didn't br bring it f from the start because uh, sometimes I can be very clumsy, especially when I'm in pain, so I might make messes. All right, uh, essentially what you want is, let me see if this works. If not, I should have another one. You want a white, you want some kind of gray, and you want some kind of very light blue. And if you have a beige, you can add touches. If you have very light beige, you can add touches. This is a uh, antique white. And you can use the antique white as well, not just the regular white. Let me make sure that I get my proper paint brushes. So these are some brushes that I thinned out because I couldn't find what I liked. I was uh, referring to the artisan powders. You can find them in uh, Polyclay Play 
the Franco Garcia artisan powders. They are great to use, but as I said, they require a little bit more expertise and I'm not sure that I want to use this in a, this kind of live. Okay, so I'm going first to get some of this gray and I'm going to use it as a shade on the lighter gray and as a brightened on the darker gray, gray. So doesn't take a lot of it. So you you have to consider that the light comes kind of like from behind because we decided at the very beginning that uh, this is a sunrise. You want some lines here. And you want to suggest that there are some little ledges pretty much. So you can just use lighter spots just to suggest the dimension and of course they will be lit on the top some and this is pretty much all the gray that I used now let's use a little bit of this antique white and with this one I'm going to have to be very careful because I cannot open it. I might have to bring my jaws up there. I finally I finally got to my acrylic paints tote crate but I still have to go through all of them to see which of them are still good and what colors I still need to get to replace the ones that got dry because I have some that have been there for over 10 years Okay, now here be very careful on what I'm going to do because you only want with the white or the off-white, you only want a glimmer pretty much on the very top and maybe along one of the cliffs because it's just the sunlight, it would be just the sunlight. And don't worry about sealing because at this point the acrylic, once you bake it, this is why I'm painting before baking, because in, in with most acrylics and definitely all the acrylics that are on the market, uh, if you bake them with the clay, they pretty much bond with the clay. And this is why, for example, if you use the Inca gold uh, wax. Okay, this is not thin enough. I need another thin. Because Inca gold is a, it's not really a wax. It's pretty much based on uh, acrylic. It's acrylic with some additives. And when you bake it, you need to put it on the clay before you bake it. Otherwise, it will start coming off if you don't bake it with the... You can bake the clay, but then put it back in the oven uh, after you apply it. And let me shake this a little bit longer. Uh, put it back in the oven for like 10 minutes so that it would bond with the clay. And you won't have to put any kind of sealer on top of that. But if you just put it on top of... Uh, baked already baked clay no matter how much you're going to wait for it to harden it will not harden properly okay I'm going to simply use this because I only want a line Let's 
let's give it a sunlight line here. And you just want the very edge of your ledges to be gently whiter. And if you're at it, you can go ahead and remember we used clay here, but you can go ahead and add a little bit of paint as well to give it more light. And on these, but let's finish this here. Now, as I said, I'm going to use acrylic for the water reflection yeah maybe if I would make a waterfall there huh that would be something okay I'm going to use a little bit of this and uh, you can do this on the baked clay just remember that you will have to bake it again so I'm going to use some of this gray and I'm going to actually kind of wash it down but I'm going first to place it here. And remember, it's not going to go all the way. And I have to mirror what's on top. give it just one touch with the castle And now let me show you the secret of what the water effect. This time I'm going to get the plain white. First of all, I'm going to use a toothpick directly on this. the water effect then I'm going to dip the toothpick and actually not the toothpick I actually need a uh, I guess I can use this instead of a needle your best bet is a needle but I guess I'm gonna just use this not this one I got the wrong one do I still have it here where's my sculpting tool there it is sorry I messed up I thought I had put it back. So I'm going to use just this very, very thin part, but you can use a needle. 
and you want this to be just slightly touched with color you don't want the color dripping you just want a little bit of touch of color and again it's much easier to do it with a needle because you go just in the length of the needle you just want to have some very fine white lines it doesn't no i guess this one doesn't work it doesn't uh, catch on the let's try the normally i do it with a needle on paint maybe the the paint is not pigmented enough they're a little bit thicker than I want them but I'm gonna thin them out here in a minute it's way thicker than I want This is too thick. Yeah, let's scoop it up. And there we have a water reflection. And now let's do again also very nice and gently. And the... Uh, Clips. Again, pretty much a wash. You need pretty much a wash, not a pure color. So you want a, a wash means that the color has been very, very diluted. So I'm first placing my color. And then I'm going to go back and start thinning it out. So, washing the paintbrush, kind of drying it out a little bit. again the same thing I'm going to use the toothpick I turn it around because it's much easier to go left to right for me and you want to go one more time here slightly darker just a pinch darker That's why normally I prefer to first bake and then paint and then bake again for 10 minutes. I find it's much better. And now, again, I'll show you another secret to make it look better. Grab a toothpick again. Make sure the toothpick end is very clean. And then... You can do this with a toothpick or you can do it with a very thin paintbrush just go and kind of sop up the paint that's right at the edge because it's going to give it more of a waterline and keep 
drying the edge of the toothpick. So you kind of want to uh, soak up all the color that's here. Thank you. Well, the medieval icons, Robbie, I do them. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but in Eastern Orthodox, uh, the, the icons are supposed to be done by the book. There's actually religious books that describe, for example, that uh, Archangel Michael has to be represented wearing this color and this color. And... Uh, no, I used to s make and sell them on order. I have a couple. After I'm done with this, I'll bring it and show it to you. Um, and that, uh, you know, they have to hold in one hand this, and they have to hold in one hand this. So, uh, and the Byzantine look has to be respected. The Byzantine look is not at all realistic, at all. And... The faces have to be longish, and usually the chin is done with a little flourish. I hope you feel better, Pamela. Okay, now that I sopped up all that, I'm going to come and extend the sopping up a little bit here. I didn't do it right. The line, very good. So I just want some of the color to come. Up. How I can make this even better, again, with a pinch of white, and again, unfortunately, I have to turn it around because I, I cannot work backwards, I'm severely right-handed, but watch this, I'm going to put a little bit of white here, and then I'm going to pull it. And you'll see in a second what a beautiful effect, realistic effect of uh, water. See, I'm placing a little bit of white here, very washed off. And then I'm going to pull it. So let's do this part too. It's not very intense color, right? quite washed off. Remember I dropped some water in the lid and then pull with the toothpick. And the same at the very bottom of the cliff. Just pull the color in straight horizontal line. It's very important that you do them straight. If you didn't do them straight, simply dab a little bit of water on your paper towel and dab the color away. That's why I suggest you first bake the clay so you don't mess it up like I, like I keep doing it here. And then do all your coloring stuff. Okay, now let's see how it looks like. See, it gives it, it gives it an, a very nice dimension. Okay, I guess we're gonna pretty much stop here, and next time I'm going to do the sailboat, and we'll get into it then. Uh, but pretty much, this is what you let me remove the zoom but I'll show you a few other things so don't don't it's not ending right now I'll show you a few other things okay so you can see that it's got a lot of dimension a lot of depth the way that we did it and it's not uh, as you saw, it's not that. It's just meticulous. You just have to spend quite a bit of time, but it's exactly like uh, you would spend on an actual painting, you know. And you can add, you know, by painting a little. And to give you a little secret, if you want to do any kind of small detailed stuff, 
and I'll show you next time. Instead of uh, getting really desperate that you need a very thin paintbrush, you need a very thin blah, 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 just use a very, very fine tip uh, marker pen. And you can draw all kinds of stuff here. Okay, let me put this to the side because I'm going to take it to the oven after we are done. And then what I wanted to show you, and yes, I'm going to make this into a tutorial for the front. Remember, this is what we did on the first, very first one when I showed you how to do antiquing. And I said, it's not going to look that awesome until you actually... Um, buff it do not use power tools on this all you need is one of those super super soft cotton cloths and look at how it changes okay it does look a little metallic but look at how it changes when you start buffing it the metal look is amazing so remember i use the art alchemy waxes if you forgot or if you didn't see the first part where i did this this is the back part of the of a future steampunk style probably is going to be more clockwork style then and as i said if you're in the day clay, gr clay days clay ground group on facebook this is exactly what those free videos are explaining what actually is steampunk what is not steampunk what are other things that are not steampunk but are confused with steampunk and what's the difference and what are the elements that you must use if you use which uh, whichever of them so you can see the difference it was not buffed first and now it is buffed okay let me bring you the uh, those two icons okay so this is archangel gabriel and if you don't know what it says, it says Arjon Gabriel. It's in uh, um, Cyrillic. But he is supposed to be shown holding a lily flower and all that. And this is Archangel Michael. It's supposed to have certain but yeah this is how the faces are supposed to look like i know how to do realistic faces but um the lady who said that she's eastern orthodox knows exactly what i'm talking about but see this is the type of byzantine and the noses have to be very very thin and very long and uh, all that but the most i was making the virgin mary and uh, i think i still if you look in my Facebook profile I think I might have posted something on my on the Kaliana design I think so give me just a minute let me let me look in the photos come on go there sometimes Facebook is so slow okay in timeline photos i think a few months ago i did post some but with me posting the meme of the day it's a lot of looking but it should take me i don't know probably under one minute to find them and I'll link it on the... Most of you have Facebook, so I can link it on the... Chat. There you go. Here's... I found it. Yes, I did post. And I was also making some... Um, with Greek inspiration. Okay. 
image location let's see there you go it's going to be all i don't know if it allows me no it doesn't let me if you go on my uh, face on the kalyana design facebook look in the photos and just scroll down and you'll see there are some okay now there was one more thing and that is the contest right so uh the contest the giveaway starts uh it, it's like all the other giveaways that i had before and uh, i'm going to ask a question and i will make a pinned comment so you can find it right away when you're looking for it um and it starts right after sorry i'm cleaning my hands right after the live is over yeah don't forget to like and if you're new subscribe um so you can start answering as soon as the because normally it takes a minute or two before the live gets uh, posted it needs youtube needs time to uh, process it but initially i thought 24 hours and then I, I i said no let's do it 48 hours so even people who don't have the opportunity to watch until you know tonight or tomorrow uh, can still participate uh, but the person who will give the most correct answers this is very very important uh, the answers have to be correct don't start because uh, I had last time some people just put a whole string of my video numbers and they were not correct so just make sure that they are correct uh, the person who posts who comments with the most of the highest number of correct videos and as I said don't put the whole title just put the number on the video and no lives so do not count lives only tutorials that have been posted pre-made and the question is please list the videos in which i used more than one technique so that would be let's say if i used mokumegane and mica shift or if i used mokumegane and crackle or stuff like that but just list and you have to you know don't go for the ones when i use not surface treatments no not surface treatments just plain polymer clay techniques so i want to i want to see how people understand the technique and how people and no worries you know that i always do the um i'm always fair and as I said, the prize is a $50 Amazon gift card. So I hope that uh, you have a lot of luck. And by the way, uh, don't forget on, on the Kalyana Facebook page, I am 10 likes away from having 1,000 likes on the page. And it's going to be a giveaway for that too. So don't forget to share the Facebook page and we're gonna have a giveaway there as well so thank you so much and uh, we'll finish this next time with a sailboat and i'll make a i'll probably go ahead and just make a backing on it and i'll post a short video on facebook so you can see so we can just totally finish this one and then we'll go on with um, a journal with flowers Cause painting with flowers and cane slices and all that what pandora tiny pandora calls scanning we're gonna do some of that so we're gonna do again journals but we're gonna do more valentine's day oriented because valentine's day is coming okay thank you so much and i will see you next sunday have a wonderful sunday a wonderful coming week a great long weekend for the people who don't work tomorrow and thank you again for being my subscribers and for always being here for me. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. Goodbye.